oh, like you say, it's, not, I, I, it's I, not a true file browser. And I think Dolphin's horrible. And I, I really hate it. Um, I was just, funny enough, I'm just writing something about file managers and because, uh, I dented last night that I'm, uh, I'm using a, well, I'm trying to use PC Man FM. Um, and I hope I'm saying that right. It might be pronounced something, something different, but I just can't understand why people need all these features. It's a file manager. You drag and drop things. If you want to get down and dirty, as it were, you can drop into the command line if you well, have to. What if you want, what if you want to do it by SSH and actually send your list the files over? No, it's, 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 it's a yeah, very, but how, but how very many people? I mean, how a lot many of people? Of KDE users, lots of them would, because there are also building sites and administering things, so they very often want to connect to a remote file system over SSH, and mm-hmm. they want to be able to drag and drop things. And it does actually work. I wasn't sure if it was working. I don't think it used to work. But now you can use these protocols. No, it, it works K-files. now. They're, 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 and if you if you go into uh, edit and see me, uh, see me file uh, properties. And go, uh, what is it? I've had to do it. Yeah. You go through tools and you adjust all the view properties and everything and view. You, you, what you'll find is there's a lot of these things that have been turned off. So you can turn them back on. Yeah. One of the issues is, of course, trying to, uh, do over FTP and SSH doing the previews. Which then kind of upsets the the FTP demons and stuff because it's, it just it just gets so greedy and starts to open all these sessions trying to get previews of everything and then FTP yeah says, no, enough. That, that that is the one thing where Dolphin falls real short. Its preview is not as sophisticated for more complex files as it should be. Yeah, well, it's no, it's just Conqueror, of course, and. Uh, one of my main features, actually, sorry, I, I think we turned this into a KDE. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I, I found most useful. Aren't you glad you gave her desktop? <laughs> uh, one of the things I, I, I know not many people do that, so, uh, window specific options, uh, one of the greatest things that I, I can think of when it comes to productivity in my case is I assign applications to different desktops. But sometimes I want to open an application in some random desktop and I want it to go into the right place and in the right state. So one of the things you can do with Windows specific applications, you can do loads of things and you can tell it if I open this uh, in my case uh, LaTeX editor, I want it to always open in desktop 8. Uh, initially I want it to be located in these coordinates, I want it to be on top of things and I can tell it how to behave so every time I open it, it will go in the right place and it will stay there or change as I tell it to do. And and for each application, I set up these settings and then I just I get my activity sorted out without having to like move things around and organize them. And I always find them in the right place. And that's that's a really nice thing that I can do. I I I I have an appreciation for that, but that's not how I do my workflow. So I don't use that feature. But I know what you're talking about. Well, before we crack on with the first track of the day, um, which hopefully will be my recommendation, we'll um, just briefly mention two distros which I'm quite excited about and certainly have kept my eye on for the last couple of years, which one to choose first. I'll go with um, Sabayan. That's uh, got its release six now. Uh, Roy, I don't know how much uh, contact you've had with this. Or I know uh, it's like... KDE KD and Gnome, this stuff. Yeah. For it. I think it was originally used to be more KDE focused back in 2007 or so. Right, uh, it, it's it's a very good distro. Uh, I've been using it for many years. Uh, admittedly, at the moment, I'm running a temporary Mint installation, but uh, I've, I've been using uh, Sabine for for a long time now. And apart from having a very groovy intro track when you stick in the live CD, it's uh, a very good solid distro, and I'd Based heartily Gen- recommend it. Based in Gen two, uh, Gen- yeah, it's it's really a binary kind of Gen two, and uh, and it's I, uh, and it's very very quick. Um, yeah, you know, I can honestly say I've never heard it pronounced that way because I always call it Symbian. <laughs> I I read it. Um, I, I think I just read it recently because I was trying not to embarrass myself again with yes, another badly pronounced word. It's sabion. Uh, uh, sabion, as in by. Um, let me just double check that. But yeah, I believe uh, that's that's. You're talking side. about S Y B I A N, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, so you mean about Sabi? That's the uh, Muslim edition of Ubuntu, and then there is Sabayon, S-A-B-A-Y-O-N. Okay. Are you it's an Italian that? one. Uh, yeah, Lix, yes, Lix, so you're talking about S-Y-N-D-I-A-N. O-N. Yeah, oh, okay. We're thinking of different distros then. 
Uh, we well, like six hundred of them. I don't, I, I, I don't know all of them either. And actually, there are some quite a few of them. One point over these is of all kinds of distros, quite nice looking ones. Uh, yeah, the problem with a lot of those is they're, um, they're either a, a mint or an Ubuntu like. Retheming or something that they're not really another distro. Which kind it of improves the quality of the of the distributions in general we have. I think the ones that kind of perish, uh, I mean, Pop Linux had to move to a Ubuntu base, so now it's just really a. I wouldn't say a skin, but it's based on Ubuntu and with enhancements. So it's going to be a really good solution. Well, and that that is what Canonical wants. Canonical wants all Linux distros to be based on Ubuntu. Oh, Jesus. I mean, Red Hat's doing pretty well, and yeah, some things are based in Fedora still. And I was going to mention next the uh, results of Red Hat, because they, they break past the, well, expect to break past the uh, 1 billion per year, uh, I think it's revenue, not pro- I think it's revenue mark. Uh, and they expect within the next four years, I think 2015, to break through uh, 3 billion a year in revenue, and that's for free software. That you really need to sell your support, uh, which is good news, of course. And the uh, one of one of the things they brag about now is the uh, open source virtualization alliance that's based around the KVM hypervisories, uh, well, and, gaining lots of numbers. To take a detour there for a minute, that's one of the things I really do think the industry as a whole really underestimates. They kind of ignore the fact that open source and Linux and other open source projects are multi-billion dollar industries. They're not this, you know, free nutters. Yeah, it is. A lot of them are making money. Yeah, I mean, I I make money basically. I could say from supporting Linux and basically because I know what I'm doing. I I just need to watch over things and, you know, if I can deal with KVM that helps me out. It doesn't have to be my main my main job or my main occupation. You could say it's actually to do with my PhD. But uh, but the fact is that if 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 people know how to do it with Linux, even if their job is not to do with Linux, if they just know how to connect to the server to fix something that's broken, you know that's 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 part of their job. Uh, it doesn't qualify as uh, I don't know like selling candy or something. It's just you have the skill, and therefore you have the job. People who work in Google. The engineers, they, they do have to know what they do with curl or uh, with bash, you know, killing processes and sending signals to them. And, you know, that's that's what they do. That's that's the company which you believe now pays the most money among the giants in technology. So it's not well, actually. And, and on that note, I, I just don't know. I, every so often I wind up in a college or a junior college, either, you know, doing tutoring or something or something else. And I always see that dumb 19 year old who's like the whole internet should just run on windows and i'm just like i don't know i don't know where to start with that uh, it's probably <laughs> the person knows windows so well or thinking it was windows gui so well and he would yeah. wish he would wish that it's three really self-fulfilling prophecy things from the whole myself technet and the, you know, the whole community of the uh, that everything will adjust to them and to their convenience instead of actually working more Reliably, which uh, actually reminds me of the news about, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's to call it uh, BPOS or Office Cycle, Office 360, because it's down like five five days a year. They call it 365, it's supposed to be up all the time. Uh, whatever it is, it just keeps crashing. It's, it's not just a downtime, it's bloody crashes. It actually crashes. And it takes them time to, I don't know what, what the hell they do, but they have to like bring it back up, basically. It's not networking issues that they might actually try to blame networking issues, but, uh, this thing is not available to users, and they cannot access their documents sometimes. Sometimes they cannot access their email either. Uh, and that's just because it's based on, you know, platforms that are developed by mostly one company that's got a monopoly on it, and they have no chance. They work against bloody 70 companies working in very high capacity on a kernel and they just cannot get the same performance they, they cannot test it sufficiently so well, on, on, on that note in efficiency and why we're talking about new stuff coming out i don't know if y'all have talked about this or not but what's y'all's opinion on the fact that we are now officially on linux version 3 point something it's, uh, it's supposed to be a lot faster did you see the email from uh, linus he sent the email like two, three days ago, 
uh, in which he was talking about his regressions and stuff and the fact that it's supposed to be a lot faster. So apparently they could actually say, oh, 3.0, it's a lot faster. Uh, and not just say, well, it's 3.0, we did a version.